The history of modern Indian banking system dates back to the 18th century. The need of formal banking was felt primarily to support the trading activities of the British rulers. The education and training needs of Indian bankers were heavily dependent on the Chartered Institute of Bankers London and this continued as late as the 1920s. At this juncture, leading bankers of the day like Sir R. P. Masani and Sir Sorabji Poch Khanwala felt the need to have a similar banking institute in India. This idea bore fruit in the form of the establishment of the Indian Institute of Bankers in 1928. At the time of commencement of operations, the institute had a membership of 24 fellows, 25 associates and 109 ordinary members. IIBF started its journey much before Reserve Bank of India came into existence. The institute was set up by the bankers with a primary objective of educating people for the banking sector. Because at that point in time, it was thought that London Institute of Banking is not in a position to deliver and groom people for the banking sector. It was renamed as the Indian Institute of Banking and Finance, IIBF, in 2003. IIBF has its registered office at Mumbai and its zonal offices in the four metros of Kolkata, Delhi, Chennai and Mumbai. Its current membership strength is more than 6.5 lakhs. The Reserve Bank has been associated with the IIBF for long. In the initial years, the governors of the Reserve Bank used to be the president of the IIBF. So once it reached maturity, then we thought that uh, our leadership need not necessarily be present and it can be uh, given in the hands of, able hands of uh, leadership within the banking community. That way we uh, came out of the governing board. More than 3 lakh candidates appear every year for its flagship courses alone across more than 250 centers. In addition, the institute conducts examinations in about 30 specialization courses. All these exams are conducted in the objective type format. The institute offers a certificate on successful completion of a course. The memories that I have are of us, you know, getting together after a hard day's work, sitting down, uh, going through the books, uh, solving the problems, uh, pulling each other's legs about the kind of mistakes we were making and then going in a group to appear for the examinations. And uh, in fact, uh, the results used to come during office hours and uh, we were at that point of time, I was in, a Cal in the Calcutta main branch, which is a huge branch and it had a very nice lunch room. And by the number of people who would come into the, uh, to the lunch room smiling, you would know who would got the good results and who would not got the good results. The institute publishes a daily e-newsletter called FIN at the rate of Quest, a monthly newsletter called IIBF Vision and a quarterly journal called Bank Quest, containing articles on contemporary banking related issues, with each issue focused on a particular theme. The institute has also published approximately 60 books on banking and finance related subjects, which are courseware for its various examinations. The institute made its presence felt internationally by hosting the prestigious International Banking Summer School in New Delhi in 1988 and 2009. It also hosted the first Afro-Asian Banking School in 1990 at Bangalore, the 10th World Conference of Banking Institutes in 1992 at Goa, and the Conference of Asian Pacific Association of Banking Institutes in 2014 in Mumbai and the current one being held in New Delhi. Well, the, there is scope for a large number of uh, institutions in a country like ours. Uh, but the focus of uh, the institute should be on training employees in the, in the banks. First of all, there is a certain amount of basic training which is needed by everyone who enters the banking industry. 
that training has been given by the Institute of Bankers for a very long time. That training is not being given by anybody else. It is a matter of training, not a few hundreds, but a few thousands. That training program is unique, in my opinion, to the Indian Institute of Banking and Fine Arts. The institute also offers consultancies to overseas institutes in customization of examinations, moderation of questions and answer papers for banking institutes in Sri Lanka, Zambia, Nepal, Botswana, Malaysia, Bangladesh and a few other countries. The Indian Institute of Banking and Finance has really customized this training program for our uh, institute which is a great help on their part uh, because as far as I know that majority of the other training institute they prefer uh, their, their pre-designed training courses but they have done a fantastic job by uh, preparing a customized training program as per our need. The institute also organizes the Sir Purushottam Das Thakur Das Memorial Lecture which has been an annual event since 1981 in memory of one of the founders of the institute Sir Purushottam Das Thakur Das. The institute invites distinguished intellectuals from within the country as well as internationally to deliver these lectures in any subject related to banking and finance. The R.K. Talwar Memorial Lecture is organized by the institute in collaboration with the State Bank of India in memory of the late R.K. Talwar, former chairman of the State Bank of India. Distinguished intellectuals are invited to deliver lectures. The sixth lecture in this series was delivered by Dr. Arvind Panagriya, Vice Chairman, Niti Ayog, on the 17th of July 2015. During its Diamond Jubilee year in 1988, the Institute introduced an Overseas Research Fellowship titled as Diamond Jubilee Overseas Banking Research Fellowship. With the intention to encourage research in the banking field, this fellowship was offered to undertake research study on the latest development in banking in any country in the world except the neighboring countries. This was merged in 2007-2008 with the CH Bhaba Fellowship offered by the Indian Banks Association and came to be known as the Diamond Jubilee and CH Bhaba Banking Overseas Research Fellowship. This fellowship entails a banker, I'm supposed to take a research in a topic which is relevant to the contemporary banking and then there is a small leg of you know foreign, I'm, I'm, as a awardee, I can go to a other country, I can learn the best practices and then I'll give a small report based upon the report what Indian banks can learn from other countries. Macro research proposals are also invited by the institute every year, wherein it awards 2.5 lakhs per project for a study to be carried out within four to six months. The Institute has so far published 31 research projects in five volumes. Copies of these published reports are provided to banks, financial institutions and academic bodies for wider dissemination of the research findings. The Institute's micro-research activity is an essay competition for members of the Institute to present their original ideas, thoughts and best practices suggestions on areas of their interest. The winning essays are identified and approved by the Institute's Research Advisory Committee. Each prize winner is given a cash award and a certificate. The Institute has all its activities online, be it membership, registration for examinations, conducting of the actual examination or anything else. The institute also provides e-learning and pre-recorded video lectures for its flagship courses to help candidates to understand the concept and pass the examinations with the requisite marks. The number of challenges are there in front of the banking industry. The number of regulatory changes are being made. A lot of money is being spent on uh, compliance to regulatory changes. But most important thing uh, for any institution and especially for banking is training. And where IIBF has been playing a very, very, very crucial role and I wish IIBF continues uh, with the same zeal and vigor with which they are functioning. For a long time, the activities of the institute had been confined mostly to the distance learning mode. But conceding to repeated requests and demands from the banking sector, the institute set up a training center known as Leadership Center 
to offer classroom training to bankers. The institute offers specialized programs in niche areas such as trade finance, credit appraisal, compliance, project finance, forex, etc. In addition, it offers weekend courses called Advanced Management Program to Bank Executives on the lines of an EMBA. The Institute has won innumerable awards for academic input, service delivery, etc. within the country as well as abroad. These awards are an endorsement of robust systems and the academic excellence of the Institute. The Institute has stepped into the social media space with Facebook and YouTube so as to reach out to its members and others and to make its courses relevant and up-to-date in banking and finance. It has uh, given me pride, confidence. It builds up confidence uh, for the counter staff. To enhance my knowledge. Uh, in banking industry, uh, so CIB certification is a very big thing. This knowledge, acquired knowledge can be utilized for the better growth of banking. I feel obliged to do better. It all feels great. It's just great. The Institute plans to develop a mobile app to enable candidates, members and others to access information about IIBF, its courses and examinations in a convenient way. The Institute is also gearing up to offer its e-learning through mobiles, tabs, etc. The Institute also plans to make its publications available as e-books to make the material ready for reading at any time by members. The quality and standard is the hallmark of the Institute. We always strive to maintain that quality and standard and deliver uh, to the best expectation of the banking industry. The Indian Institute of Banking and Finance is a dynamic institute which aligns itself with the changing requirements of time. The endeavor of the Institute is to create value and remain relevant to the members at all points to come.